Hi, my name is Noor Al-Umar, and in this presentation, I'll be talking about our work that investigated the privacy compliance processes followed by developers of child-directed apps. This is joint work with my advisor, Dr. Serge Ackerman. Research studies continue to uncover a range of potential privacy violations that render mobile apps potentially non-compliant with applicable privacy regulations. This includes collecting personal data to be used for prohibited purposes without having legal basis under applicable privacy laws. At the same time, countries continue to enact privacy regulations with similarities and differences in their legal requirements. Despite ongoing research and regulatory efforts, we are yet to answer three questions. Why do privacy issues continue to persist? How effective developers' compliance processes are? And how can such processes be improved? Since the kids' provisions of privacy regulations in the United States and Europe are known to be more stringent than the provisions that apply to general audiences, we believe that studying the privacy compliance processes followed by developers of child-directed apps presents an opportunity for understanding how to make policy efforts more effective. CARPA, GDPR, and the CCPA are privacy laws that have provisions that protect child users in the US or the EU. CARPA applies to users under the age of 13, whereas GDPR protects users under the age of 16. Under CARPA, Developers are required to obtain verifiable parental consent before collecting or transmitting data from children to third parties. Similarly, under GDPR, if consent is relied upon as a legal basis, it has to be provided or approved by a guardian. For CCPA, verifiable parental consent is needed before opting in users under the age of 13 to certain data processing activities. However, users between 13 and 16 may consent, and those over 16 years of age must request to be opted out. The three privacy laws also have transparency requirements that require developers to disclose the types of data their apps collect, as well as the kinds of third parties that receive users' data and the purposes of their data collection and sharing activities. Other privacy rights that users are provided with include the ability to withdraw their consent, inquire about how their data was used, or request the deletion of their data. To understand the efforts made by developers of child-directed apps to comply with privacy regulations, we started by deploying a survey to understand organizational privacy practices to developers who published apps on the Google Play Store. The results of the survey inspired us to design a second survey for personnel within the developer organizations. However, the data we collected after deploying the two surveys was not sufficient for understanding compliance processes. And that's the reason why we subsequently recruited app developers for semi-structured interviews. We additionally analyzed developers' apps and compared the results of app testing with developers' responses to our surveys and interview questions. In the two surveys, we focused on understanding developers' awareness of their apps' behaviors, whether they have formal processes for compliance and for vetting third-party code for inclusion in their apps, whether they are familiar with applicable privacy laws and their perceptions of their compliance obligations, whether and how they obtain parental consent before collecting personal data from child users, their experiences with the Google Play Store policies, and the challenges they experience when trying to comply with applicable privacy laws. In our follow-up interviews, we discussed with participants their compliance processes, presented them with some of the results of our testing of their apps, and observed how they reacted to our findings. For that, we needed to do some preparation prior to each interview session. We used some of their apps like a child would. By not unlocking functionality only available to adult users, such as parents, we looked for transmissions of personal data and whether parental consent is obtained prior to that. We read their privacy policies, and we also looked for indicators of third-party SDK compliance misconfigurations. In order to identify SDK misconfigurations, we needed to test some of the SDKs used in child-directed apps. We integrated the SDKs in test apps that we created and then used their compliance configurations like developers would. The configurations com could be server-side configurations like the one Unity Ads has on their dashboard or client-side configurations such as this code snippet that Google AdMob asks developers to use so that ad requests receive child-directed treatment. After that, we looked at the transmissions generated from the test apps to identify indicators of whether the compliance settings were used. Then we looked for the same indicators in developers' apps and discussed our findings with the participants. We found that most developers believe that their privacy policies disclosed all the data collection and transmission behaviors of their apps. 
However, our testing showed that 17% of them had published apps that transmitted identifiers to third parties. Also, although 60% believed that obtaining parental consent is important, only 36% said they did so across all their apps prior to data collection. When we tested their apps, however, we found that none of them had implemented verifiable mechanisms for obtaining parental consent. We also found developers who used simple knowledge-based questions or age gates that could be bypassed by children, all of which don't meet the legal requirement of verifiable parental consent under applicable privacy laws or the FTC. Despite that, we found that many developers demonstrated understanding of the importance of obtaining parental consent. Those who believed that they did not need to obtain parental consent provided explanations such as saying that their apps are not dangerous, that the data collection is done by SDKs, or that the store is responsible for evaluating the apps before making them available to users. During our interviews, when we discussed that parental consent needs to be verifiable, we observed that there is a general lack of awareness of this legal requirement, with participants explaining that it's the responsibility of parents or app stores to verify that consent is obtained from guardians. The results of our organizational survey also showed that 42% did not have processes for addressing privacy issues during the software development lifecycle. Our survey results also showed that most developers claim familiarity with COPPA, GDPR, and the CCPA. Most believe that they are required to comply with them and also believe that all their apps are compliant. In our second survey, we also asked personnel within the developer organizations about their familiarity with the three privacy laws in addition to the California Privacy Rights Act, CPRA, which will replace the CCPA. We found that survey respondents were more familiar with COPPA and GDPR compared to CCPA and CPRA. However, 23% of respondents claimed familiarity with the fictitious privacy law we called FLIRPA, which we added as a quality control. Although this finding was surprising to us, it might show the level of uncertainty of developers and their compliance obligations given the complexity of the privacy compliance landscape and that developers might not have access to legal expertise. We also asked per per respondents about how they determine the privacy laws that are applicable to them and found that 52% of them rely on Google Play as their source for guidance. For example, one of them mentioned, Google routinely verify their respective COPPA. They send notifications in case of violations so we can fix them. We also found that only 8% believe that privacy compliance is not a challenge for them. As for their level of concern regarding the consequences of not complying with privacy regulations, 68% believe that they are unlikely to be investigated by regulators. And 45% were concerned about the removal of their apps from the store. We examined whether developers are more concerned about the removal of their apps from the store compared to being investigated by regulators and found the result to be statistically significant. This highlights the major role that app stores play in privacy compliance. As for privacy compliance processes, we found that many developers simply decided to not collect any data from their users to comply with all applicable privacy regulations, with some developers indicating uncertainty about the behaviors of third-party SDKs integrated in their own apps. Others just assume that their apps are in compliance since they have not been rejected by the store. As for how third-party SDKs are selected, 22% said that they don't use third-party SDKs at all. 20% check SDK documentation for information about the types of data SDKs collect before deciding to integrate them. 10% said they only use SDKs listed in Google's list of self-certified SDKs, and 10% only use SDKs they trust to be in, in compliance. In our follow-up survey, we found that only 31% had the processes to vet third-party SDKs for inclusion in their apps, with some participants explaining that they lack relevant expertise. Others trusting that SDKs made available by prominent companies are legal to use, which we confirmed in our follow-up interviews. Some delegated these kinds of decisions to their CEOs, and a few worked with third-party auditing services such as Privo and trusted their advice. Our app testing also showed that most interview participants had third-party SDK compliance settings that were misconfigured. The majority of them indicated that they, did, that they did not know that they had to configure SDKs for compliance. For example, one of them said that they expected that it's done automatically by SDKs. Others decided not to use them because the store did not force them to use them. We also had some participants who used some, but not all SDK compliance configurations correctly. 
Some said that they lack the resources that help them do so, while others explain that many of their apps that are still available on the store are not kept up to date with all compliance requirements. Therefore, the main takeaways from our research are that many developers lack complete understanding of the behaviors of their own apps and their compliance obligations. Most developers lack awareness that parental consent needs to be verifiable. Many were not aware of the behaviors of third-party SDKs integrated in their own apps. And that app stores play a significant role in how developers learn about their compliance obligations, how they assess whether their apps are in compliance, and therefore in improving compliance rates. More importantly, many developers are feeling the burden of compliance, and therefore they need guidance on how to identify and fix compliance issues. In order to reduce the burden of compliance, we recommend that the stores provide developers with usable compliance checking tools, app compliance status during app submission to the stores, and up-to-date pointers to the various SDK compliance settings that need to be configured. And since the prior work has showed that developers are more likely to keep using the default settings of third-party SDKs, we expect modifying the defaults to be privacy-preserving to help in improving compliance rates. However, for guidance to be effective, it has to not introduce more burden on developers by making sure that it's accurate, timely, up-to-date, and easy to understand. At the same time, we also believe that the stores are well positioned to provide better enforcement of the requirements of applicable privacy laws. In conclusion, our mixed methods research showed that app developers place a large degree of trust in the policy enforcement made by app stores. We identified common misconceptions that led developers to believe that their apps are in compliance when they were not. We therefore believe that compliance rates can be improved if developers are provided with actionable guidance, usable compliance checking tools, and better enforcement by app stores. Thank you.